Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another about me fun facts style of video. I've done these in the past. I think that they are a lot of fun not only to shoot, but also to watch because I feel like you can really get to know the person behind the camera. You get to know what their little quirks are, things about them that you wouldn't know otherwise because generally speaking, I'm talking about makeup, application, skincare, things like that, not necessarily my favorite foods or the fact that I like the way a skunk smells. Yes, I talked about that in one of my previous videos. So I try to not repeat myself. I'm going to have them linked down below. Hopefully I don't repeat myself, but there's a lot of just quirky things about me that I just want to share with you guys. Also, if you're looking at this eye and you want to see it, I'm going to leave the tutorial for it as well in the description box. I did this look yesterday. So I've got you covered. Let's go ahead and get on my phone. I have to sit here and write these things down. Otherwise, <laughs> I will forget. And I'm going to start off with one that I know that I forgot to do. I don't know if I have spoken about this in a previous one. So if I have, forgive me. It's hard sometimes to keep track of everything I have told you guys. But if you watched my video where Puffin applied Puffin, Puffin is my husband, that's what I call him, that's his nickname, and Puffin is the lips, one of the lipsticks that I created with Christian Aldet, now available in singles, by the way. Well, if you caught <laughs> him doing this, he said, no, 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 I have to stick out my tongue, I guess. I do that. I never knew I did that until Kelsey told me about it. I had I was like, what are you talking about? Why are you making that face at me? And now I see myself doing it all the time and it drives me crazy. I've had to stop myself in the middle of a tutorial from doing it because I will either have my mouth wide open while, you know, doing my eyeshadow or I'm doing this. Like I'm just kind of chewing on my not chewing, just my tongue has to be in the side of my mouth. And apparently everybody has seen me do this other than me. So when I'm in deep concentration, deep thought, I apparently do this. And uh, so that's what Puffin was talking about. That's why I was giving him the glare. It's because I knew he was thinking about me. I was like, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're doing right now. They might not know what you're doing, but I know what you're doing. <laughs> Another thing that happened in that video, a lot of you guys know about this. and. I actually didn't know about it. I knew that I had these little quirks, like I don't like my face touched. Some people in that video were like, hello, Mel, it is just makeup. It's okay if he touches your face. It's not about the makeup. I don't care if you ruin my makeup. I was really half expecting him to take that puff and lipstick and draw all over my face. It would have been fine as long as it wasn't his hands. And he knows that I don't like my face touched. I... I'm not a germaphobe or anything like that, but I don't like my face touch. I have a sensory disorder. I do not like soft touch in general. The, whoo, just thinking about somebody touching me softly, like taking their hand, oh, like it just makes me itch. That's why when he got underneath my, my chin, I started freaking out a little bit. I don't like my face touched. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. And I know that that's a repeat for some of you guys, but because I feel like it's been such a long time since I've done one of these, I wanted to point that out in this video. Yes, I have a sensory disorder. And it seems to be one of the reasons why I truly love to get tattooed. I don't wanna be tickled. I don't wanna massage unless you're really going to go in. I don't like soft touch. Tattoos, obviously, are you know something that most people would consider painful and what for whatever reason my brain takes that as a pleasure it takes it as somebody who would be getting a massage something that is relaxing it is relaxing to me it's not painful it just feels good <laughs> and i am about to get my back worked on redone and uh i'm excited about it. the only thing i'm not excited about is backs when you do your back Oh my gosh, it itches. All tattoos itch whenever they heal, but whoo, the back, when you are trying to sleep and you are trying to itch it and not itch it at the same time because you're not supposed to, it's the worst feeling in the world. And I'm about to start that in two weeks. We are extending the back. I'm going over everything. It's going to be very relaxing and also a pain in the butt at the same time. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Loyal. And I am loyal to a fault sometimes. 
I am one of the most loyal people you will ever meet. If you are friends with me, I am your friend. I am ride or die for you. I will do anything for you. And uh, I'm the type of person, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be my friend. We could have been best friends and had a falling out and never spoken again. And I can know all your secrets. I could ruin you. <laughs> Sounds terrible. But I could know all of your secrets and you could rest assured I would never, ever, ever, ever spill them because I think that is one of the most cruel things to do, especially when people talk to you in confidence. So I'm loyal like that. I'm loyal to you. If you are a part of my life, I'm loyal. And that's not just family, friends, or this or that, or keeping your secrets. Um, my nail tech, I didn't get my nails done for years. That's because she stopped and I wanted her to do them. <laughs> um, if I have a hairstylist, I want to go to just them. I'm, I find my people and then I do not stray. Very, very loyal. All right, shoelace is uneven. Oh my gosh, this relates back to my sensory disorder. Even from a kid, I mean toddler, two years old, my mom told me these stories and I remember being young, obviously not two years old, but I remember being young and my parents putting shoes on me and the socks, so this is a two part thing. The socks, you know when they have the seam, it doesn't go over the top of the toes right here. It's right at the, right here at the edge of your toes. <gasps> oh my gosh, I hated it so much and I still hate it. They could be the cutest socks in the world. They could be the most comfortable as in like uh, squishy and soft. You know, you run around the house, it's snowing outside today. There's that. Uh, I still don't want them because I don't like the feeling of them right up against my toes. Well, another thing, I don't like a lot of shoes that have laces, unless they have a zip up down the side. I have to absolutely love a shoe that has laces with no zip for me to buy them because I will walk around for a solid 30 minutes making sure that each foot feels exactly the same. I do not wanna feel one side be tighter than the other side. I will just lose my mind. I have to walk around and make sure that they are both even. Yes, yes, I, I will drive myself a bonkers. A lot of people don't know this about me, unless family, family knows this about me. And Becca, my best friend who is now in Texas, she was in Japan, Hawaii, now she is in Texas. She knows this about me because we used to go around taking pictures and whatnot. And a lot of the stuff that I have found <laughs> has been with her back when I was 18. I am fascinated by paranormal activity, ghosts, things like that. I don't necessarily believe everything that is out there, but I have had some experiences of my own. I never believed in them at all until I had my own experience, and that's a whole thing in and of itself. But Becca and I used to, uh, we lived in South Carolina, and we used to go to these you know, apparently haunted places. And we would take pictures. And the very first picture that I've ever seen a face in, I mean, full on, I'm getting chill bumps, full on face was with her. And I carried this phone around. It was one of those flip phones where I took the picture and it was at nighttime. Nothing. There was what appeared to be an Indian possibly. He looked like he had a headdress, everything on. It was so detailed. I kept that for the longest time. And I don't know where it is now. I wish I still had it. I did end up saving it somewhere on a computer and I don't have it. I really wish I had that to show you because it's one of the creepiest pictures I have ever taken. And I, I get a lot of slack about that. <laughs> people get on like whatever and blah, 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 blah. So that makes me not want to talk about it with people. But yes, I do. I'm very fascinated with ghosts and paranormal activity. But I am terrified of the toilet. <laughs> Let me explain. I, I don't know why, but okay. If I go into a public restroom and there's nobody in there, I'm not flushing that toilet. I'm not doing it. Absolutely, absolutely not. If I hear somebody come in and they go into a stall, then I will flush the toilet. If I am empty in there, and sometimes I wait a few seconds to see if someone's gonna come in or whatever. If there's nobody in that restroom, I am not flushing it. And I, you know, I know you guys are screaming at me right now. 
for whatever reason in my mind, I feel like if I flush the toilet, I can't hear if something happens. So if somebody, you know, like an ax murderer comes <laughs> into the bathroom and I have just flushed the toilet, just happened, then I won't know that somebody is in there. If I already know that somebody is in there, then I'm kind of aware of what's going on. But if no one's in there, I'm not flushing that toilet. I'm sorry to whoever is uh, <laughs> going in after me. I don't leave like a mess or anything like that. Get out, your, get out your brain. And what's worse is if it's one of those automatic flushing toilets, I'm going to wait until it's done and I can hear again before I leave the stall. Yeah, I don't know why I'm terrified and I do the same exact thing at night in my own house because I wear earplugs and Puffin is always picking on me because he'll get up in the morning and there'll be so much toilet paper in the bowl because I go to the bathroom a million times in the middle of the night. <laughs> don't flush it. It's not that I'm scared I'm going to wake him up or bother him or anything like that. I have earplugs in and... It's the same kind of thing. I want to be aware of what is around me and how my bathroom and everything is set up. I can see things or whatever. I just can't flush a toilet at night. I just can't do it. <laughs> Another fun fact is uh, I don't really care for bacon. <laughs> I feel like I just heard you guys gasp at that because nobody ever relates with that. I don't want the bacon. I don't really care. I like bacon on its own if it's cooked right in the morning, but I also, I'm not going out to find it. If it's just there, I might eat it, but it's not something I'm gonna get excited about. I'm not gonna put it on anything intentionally. I, If I order something and it comes with bacon, I'm not going to just take it off because the bacon taste is on there. No, I don't want that. So I can't have the bacon on it at all. I just don't put it on there. It's kind of like, you know, pickles. Some people don't like pickles, so they want the pickles off. If you leave the pickles on there and then you just take them off, well, that sour taste is there. And I feel the same way about bacon. I don't want the bacon. I have curly hair. Yes, I know. You guys have never even seen my hair. I don't think, no. Not more than a pixie. And even on Instagram, when you go all the way down, I pretty much always had it in, um, I straightened it out because I have really fine hair. I have a lot of hair, but it's very fine. And my curls would make me so mad because they would be uneven. One day they would be so good on one side and then the other side would be almost just wavy with some curls. They just were not consistent. I'm going to insert a picture. I was 18 years old here and ta-da! Yes, that is my natural color and my natural curl to my hair. Who woulda thunk it? Another fun fact about my hair, I was 12 the very first time I wanted a pixie cut. I begged and begged and begged and begged and begged to get my hair all cut off when I was little. So I feel like that was just something I was meant to have. I was meant to have really short hair or like almost no hair. But yes, 12 years old. I will never forget the feeling I got after I had it cut. You know, it was really long and I had just an old style pixie because I was 12 back then and I remember this freeing feeling and just feeling so good about myself. I remember jumping on a trampoline after and feeling wind up the back of my neck. I just, I don't think I'll ever forget the very first time that I cut all my hair off. <laughs> I am embarrassed to buy beer. Mm -hmm. Or if you were to ask me to go in and buy you a pack of cigarettes or the vaping thing or anything like that, even though obviously I am of age, it is so embarrassing to me. I do not know why I feel so uncomfortable in a liquor store of any type or even at a gas station. Like, eh, I don't drink that often anyway. Maybe that's the reason why, but I've always felt that way. I have always just felt so uncomfortable buying beer or even really being with somebody. I don't I don't drink beer, actually. Blech, I don't like that. But just, you know, you guys know what I mean. So I've always felt that way. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. I just always felt funny about it. One last little thing, and this is a story. <laughs> it's a really funny story. So it's not really about me, but it's something that happened to me here recently. Puffin was gone. He was gone on training. I think he was gone for like two days or something. And 
I had the house to myself. It was a kid-free weekend and I have two dogs. Diesel, which is my soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. He is 40 pounds and then Charlie sleeping right over here on her heated blanket. She's five and a half pounds, a party orky, teeny tiny little thing with a lot of fur. Anyway, I have her on a leash because if she sees something like a deer or rabbit or something, she is just She's going to go and try and get it. Whereas Diesel, I can make him stop. I just literally will say stop and he's trained. He's amazing. I love my little Charlie girl. Don't get me wrong. But he will actually stop. Whereas Charlie will keep going. Anywho, I'm letting Charlie do her business. And I'm seeing Diesel under, like kind of digging around underneath a pine tree, which is in a ditch. I don't really think anything of it. He plays around with stuff all the time. He'll be rolling around in the grass, whatever. Well, we live on the lake. There's a lot of snakes around here. Most of them are garden snakes. It's not a big deal. But because we live on the lake, there's water moccasins, cotton mouths, you know, and that kind of thing. Well, I was so concentrated on Charlie making sure that she had gone to the bathroom. And this is before all the cold weather and everything had started. It's still warm outside. So I would say this is about two months. I want to say two months ago. Diesel came running to the door. Didn't set off any alarm bells. He doesn't always come straight to me. If he knows we're going inside, he will go straight to the door. But when I opened the door, he kind of pushed through and ran into the living room. I'm unhooking Charlie and I see that he is messing with something. What is he messing with? And I tell him to drop it. Drop it means whatever's in your mouth, drop it on the floor. Oh, he did. He did. And when I tell you that it was a flipping cotton mouth, oh my gosh, <laughs> I screamed. I screamed. I was like, I cannot believe this is happening right now. I'm calling Puffin. He is laughing. I'm sending him a picture. What do I do? Next thing I know, this thing slithers underneath the ottoman. What's worse than a snake in your house? One that you can't see. <laughs> I am like, okay, got to get off the phone. He's like, yeah, you can't let this thing go around the house. I knew it was a cotton mouth immediately, the pattern, and then it had opened up its mouth. You could see the white inside and it wasn't a big snake. Luckily, it was a small one, a baby one. It was probably maybe two feet long. Then I see Charlie start to dart for the ottoman. I had to get her and put her into my bedroom all while trying to make sure I don't see a snake go from my ottoman to underneath the couch to somewhere in the rest of the house. I got up on my fireplace. I feel like you guys don't even know how this is all set up, but I got up on my fireplace. I had a broom and I kind of did the whole, you know, you're gonna do like this and push up the ottoman. When I did that, I saw that the snake was injured and I kind of pushed at it to come out. It came out, it was not happy with me. It was snapping quite a bit, but I got it. I got it. Now I am forever making sure that there is not a snake, cotton mouth, anything like that in Diesel's mouth before we go inside. <laughs> He's so lucky that he did not get hurt. I'm so grateful for that. That is it for my little get to know me just a little bit better video. Let me know some interesting things about you. And again, if you want to know about some other stuff <laughs> and my weird quirks, just check out the videos linked down below. And again, remember this eye is there as well. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.